Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Story number 1. Females, written by the Mad Crafter. The Yandari Death Squad was holding the rise. Bolts of electrostatic charges popping gangly hot shoulders like water balloons. A few ripping those unlucky enough to get within arm's reach, limb from limb. And then, a splash of gore, viscera spraying, the dropship that had flattened the death squad, dropping assault ramps as bipedal armored soldiers poured out without hesitation. Slug throwers barked and flashed. One carrying a plasma thrower charged to the rim of the trench and setting it and its inhabitants ablaze with the power of a star. An armored figure raised a sword, the blade vibrating so fast that it distorted the air around it. Attack! The figure cried in a modulated voice. Thirteen. There were only thirteen of them, and in less than thirty ticks had killed more than four times their number. It was a massacre, like watching gods descend upon a battle. The record drone tracks one armored figure as it cut bloody swath through the Yandari lines, slug thrower blazing, running out of ammo, and then figures switching to a sidearm and combat knife. The change in weaponry didn't hamper the living god. It only made things bloodier and more personal as the fallen got to look into the glowing optics of their killer. A Yandari got a lucky shot, blowing a chunk out of the figure's midsection as it guts another Yandari. The cold, green optics turned to look at the offender, the pistol in its hand blowing a hole through the head of the gutted victim without even looking as it advances on its new prey. A second shot deflects off its armor, leaving it glowing with heat. A third shot goes wide. A fourth. The figure raises its sidearm and aims. A fifth panicked shot clips the armored helm and spins it. Pause replay, a voice says in the recording freezes. Groans and cries of protest coming from the shadows. What are we seeing, the voice says. A spotlight shining down to show the small form of the educator standing under the massive vid screen. Anyone? A green light flashed in the dark of the audience. Speak, the instructor said. Shock assault. A mechanical translator voice droned over the clicks and chitters of one of the insectoid students. Bipedal species, likely mammalian based on morphology, ability to ignore catastrophic bodily damage indicates the use of combat stims and pain blockers. Assessment, Talvara security forces, Gethic kill team, Holondara regulars, or Jakar freebooters. The educator nodded. Astute Cadet 5583, the educator said. Tell me the commonality between your assessed combatants. There was a low drone from the dock before the mechanical voice spoke again over the clanking. All of all mentioned species employ the use of combat drugs to enhance combat efficiency. The lack of powered armor narrows the range farther. The combatants are employing kinetic weapons rather than energy-based ones, further narrowing the candidates to the aforementioned list. The educator nodded. You're neglecting a factor in your assessment, 55A3, the educator says, pacing beneath the screen, frozen at the armored figure in mid-spin from the weapon impact. There is a bias in your calculation. Reassess. There was a longer drone before a different green light flashed. Cadet 55A3 assumed the combatants were all male, based off the species they listed. A voice from the shadow said... The educator snapped his fingers and pointed into the dark. Very good, he said, before gesturing up to the screen and the lights dimming again. The recording resumed, the armored figure's head snapped back and its helm flying off. A tanned, narrow face with full lips and dark, short hair snarled, 
grabbing the Yandari and lifting it up by the chest armor. The wound on the warrior's face still smoldering on the high cheekbone, along with the midsection as they stabbed the Yandari repeatedly through the side of the neck. A female, the educator said, the video pausing just after the figure dropped their kill, face covered in blood and still smoldering flesh. 5583, assess. Human female, Terran drop marines. Based on the insignia and combat protocol, most likely six marine raiders, the translator droned. A laugh erupted from another part of the shadows. Something funny, the educator asked, just before another green light flicked on. Females aren't capable of such things, the voice rumbled beneath the translator. I came here to learn, not be shown fiction. The shadows murmured. Gadet Gaval, correct? The educator asked. Yes, the voice rumbled. Get it, your species is still new to the Union, so I'll ignore your ignorance for the time being in favor of making this a teachable moment. The educator looked into the shadows. Get it, Carter, would you oblige us? The educator asked to the shadows. Yes, sir, came a soft voice as the sound of feet rapidly stomping on the ground began to echo. A moment later, a second spotlight illuminated the form of a young human woman. Not even two meters tall, dark skin and curly haired. She was easily one of the smallest cadets in the class. She stood at attention as the rumbling laughter erupted again. You expect me to believe that this is capable of what you just showed us? Gaval growled from the shadows. Why don't you fuck around and find out? Carter said. Eyes locked on the candidate's green light, making the class stump faster and louder. That is a Terran combat challenge, the educator said. It is my understanding your people can't refuse one. Isn't that right, Cadet Gaval? Steps thumped against the stairs as the reptilian centaur-like Gaval descended before being highlighted by his own spotlight. Damn, Carver laughed. Looks like your species feeds their bitches Wheaties. There wasn't even a chance for the instructor to speak before Gaval swung, catching Carter with a fist as big as her head and sending her spinning into the dark as the room went quiet. A female is never equal to a male, Gaval said triumphantly, and then the laughing started from the dark. The lights turned on, showing Carter already hefting her to her feet while wiping blood from her mouth and eyebrows. Now... I'm going to enjoy beating your ass, she said before cocking her head curiously. By the way, is it on the back end, that thing you keep talking out of? Gaval roared and charged, Carter calmly rolling her neck and shoulders to crack the bones. And then the beating began. It happened so fast it was hard for anyone to track. The massive Gaval galloping towards Carter and swinging his anvil-sized fist at her again. Suddenly, she was being thrown by it. She was clinging to it, arms and legs wrapped around the wrist as wide as her own torso. Gaval recoiled, shaking his arm. Carter scrambled up his arm and onto his shoulders, wrapping her legs around his neck as she started punching into the side of Gaval's neck. As you can see, the educator spoke as the brawl went on. The human female, woman... Carter snarled as Gaval grabbed her and she kicked at his chin and throat. Apologies, the educator said calmly. Take note of this, class. Human, and forgive me for this, Carter. Females are bore being called females. They prefer to be called the designation of woman. And to not use that is to take your own life into your own hands. Gaval slammed Carter to the ground in a ham-fisted bomb knocking wind out of her and buying him a second to rub and bat at the numerous bruises and bleeding wounds at his neck and shoulders. Human women are more nimble than their male counterparts, the educator said as Carter hopped up, spit blood, and charged at the aiding cabal. They have higher pain tolerance. The physiology allows for greater dexterous combat over males which favor endurance and strength. Carter leapt, her feet driving into Gaval's throat before grabbing his arm and using it to flip her falling form over onto his back in a smooth, almost effortless motion. 
her boot slamming down into the point where Gaval's upright torso met his centaur-like back off, and dropping the massive cadet to the floor. Allow this to be a lesson, the educator said, as Carter wrenched Gaval's arm sideways and stepped on the gills on his forehead. Never allow the assumption of the combatant's sex to be a determining factor in your combat projections. Submit, Carter growled, pushing her foot down on Gaval's gills and pulling his arms back. Never to a female, Gaval croaked. Cadet Carver will kill Cadet Gaval in exactly 44.68 seconds, the translator droned. I am well aware, 5583, the educator said. Carter wrenched harder. She could feel things tearing and popping in Gaval's arm as she pressed her foot down hard on the gills. Submit! The massive form of Gaval growled and choked. Then something snapped. His arm in Carter's hands went limp and Gaval let out a yell. Without pause, Carter flipped the yowling Gaval over and wrenched at the opposite arm, planting her boot on his gills again. You're running out of limbs, and the educator isn't going to save you, she said, her voice soft. Admit, tap out, surrender. A moment later, as the tearing sounds began again, Gaval cried out, I submit. The lights went dark and the recording resumed. The sound elevated to drone out Gaval's whimpers of agony. The drone tracks the human woman as she rampages through a trench engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat before zooming out and displaying the entire platoon's movements and calculating the overall kills as, one by one, the platoon's markers wink out as they die. This single, entirely female unit of Terran Drop Marines inflicted a casualty rate of 35,000% from landing until termination. These 13 Terran Marines killed 4,550 Yandari, and two of the Marines survived. Carter was walking with the medics lifting Gaval out of the theater. Cadet Carter, who was that Marine we saw get her helmet blown off? The educator asked. My grandmother, Carter said, without looking back. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.